Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. Arachnophobia, written by Farm Witch 4275. I move calmly through the station, getting side glances from the humans around me, and even a few Torians, before I stood at the human ambassador's office. First contact with humanity and the Arachnus had only happened barely a month ago. So tensions were high, but friendly. I was the ambassador of the Arachnus people. Humans called us space spiders, and the Torians space oxen. Strange creatures, humans, never figured out what it meant. I looked at the secretary, the delightful lady, who looked up at me with a smile and pressed a button. I absentmindedly used my hind leg to scratch and itch my thorax. Ambassador Chuchkhak is here to see you as requested. No, oh, excellent, please let him in, came the response. You may go in. Would you like me to bring you some tea? She asked and beamed a smile at me. No, oh, that would be delightful. And don't be greedy with the biscuits. I winked at her, closing four of my eight eyes. A trait we learned from the humans. A sign of trust, apparently. I opened the door to the ambassador's office, having to tilt my body to the side to fit into it. Annoying, but the humans hadn't yet had a chance to modify all their structures to fit us. I walked into the office, and I almost immediately got taken aback by the sight of something that filled me with rage. Two of our juveniles trapped in two separate glass boxes. Out of anger, I charged forward and closely looked at them. Something was off. It looked like one of our juveniles. It had the size, shape, eight legs, eight front eyes, large thorax. It had red tips on its knee joints and head. It had fangs like we did, but something wasn't right. I made noises calling it. It failed to respond and resumed wandering around its confinement. The other one was larger, pitch black exterior with reflective chitin and massive fangs. The smell was strange, foreign, and my fear response kicked in as I caught a scent of a potent toxin. My parental instincts instantly vanished. They looked wrong. They smelled wrong. They felt wrong. Uh, what is this? I asked, my mouth parts clicking in confusion. Good morning to you, Ambassador Chick Hack. This is what I called you in for, Ambassador Carson said, sitting at his desk. I sat confused for a while before his secretary came in with some tea and a few biscuits. We had come to deeply appreciate human culinary arts, and I found pastries and cookies to be the best thing ever. Nervous, I started eating and taking loud slips of my tea. Thank you, Kimberly. Even as confused as I was, I never forgot my memories. You are welcome, sir. Do enjoy. We have coconut this time. She smiled again, put the snacks down and left. I just stood there and stared at the two strange items in front of me. Finally, after what seemed an age, I looked up at him. What the fuck? He just smiled and chuckled. Nice to see that you aren't trying to rip my legs off. I called this meeting for us because I wanted to see your reaction to one of Earth's most feared, hated, and misunderstood species. The spider. And also because I wanted to ask you for a favor. Talk a new trait, Dio. Wait. These are from your homeworld, I exclaimed, nearly spilling my tea. Yes, two of over 45,000 different species of arachnid from our tiny little planet. To your left is the Mexican red knee tarantula, one of the most human-friendly spiders. To your right is the Australian funnel web spider, the single most toxic and venomous arachnid in the animal kingdom. He stated, pointing at each box. Incredible. I used my middle neck to move one of the boxes closer to inspect it. Are they intelligent? No. Jumping spiders, yes, but only to an extent. Not by any standards that they are intelligent. They are essentially a bug killers of our world. They hunt insects, snakes, birds, and other creatures, depending on the species. Most humans hate them, he replied, handing me some photographs of the creatures we just mentioned. Why? I stood dumbstruck for a moment. Why do a lot of your Earth creatures have resemblances to Galactic Federation species? Some of the resemblances are... I looked at the red knee... Uncanny. No idea. Strange twist of fate, sick joke of the gods, a universal anomaly. Who really knows? Genetic scans and DNA testing have proven repeatedly that each species is so far removed genetically that any real connection is worthless. Even if they look like you, they are far from you. See? He handed me a photograph of a human relative, the ape. Well, that's interesting. That's uh, very interesting. I said, further looking at more photos. 
Now, the reason that this is happening is because I need to tell you about something called arachnophobia. The fear of spiders. He looked at me, stern and patient. I put my now empty teacup down and looked at him. I am listening. Spiders, arachnids, have been a part of human evolution since we started. An evolution spanning millions of years. An average of, and this is still with the advanced medical tech we have nowadays, 200 people are killed by venomous spiders every year. The beast right here, he pointed to the funnel web, is responsible for half that number. Seriously? He had to be joking. That's what I told myself. Humanity led the charge against the Incumni and wiped them out with few losses. How can a little insect kill a human? Seriously, 40 different protein toxins in those fangs, he replied, making sure the box was sealed. 40? I backed away from it. We had three types of protein toxin, and one of them was an anesthetic. By the matriarch. So, uh, with that in mind, we have developed as a species uh, with a very severe disdain, if not an outright hatred of spiders. At least according to most people. There are freaks of nature that love them, keep them as pets, or breed them to farm them for antivenom. You look like a giant backing space spider, so when meeting humans, please keep this in mind. He looked at me and relaxed back into his seat with a smile. With the kind of damage these creatures cause, I'm sure your fight or flight responses are somewhat, uh, questionable. I clicked my mouth parts a bit joking manner. He chuckled in response. There was once a case in northern U.S. where a guy burned his house down because he saw a big spider. Another case in Australia where an infestation of funnel webs led to the use of military-grade explosives to demolish a building. We both let out a hearty laugh. Oh, so it's a kill it with plasma fire mentality. We've been there and know how to handle it. I winked at him, clicking in amusement. That brings me to the next item on our agenda. We already have trade and working agreements between us as well as colonization plans. Now xenobiologists, however, have discovered something very interesting about you, specifically related to your venom. If you will indulge me, I would like to provide a demonstration. He rolled up one of his sleeves. If you think it is safe, then please be my guest. I stepped back and let him do his thing. Crazy human. That was all I could think as he picked a knife up and cut open his arms, gritting his teeth in agony. Crazy human! I stood there absolutely godsmacked at the sight as he collected some bandages and tied them and then used a small injector. Crazy human! After a few seconds, he pulled the bandages off and showed me his now eviscerated arm. Crazy human. A crude, he said between gasps of pain. A crude demonstration, but you, you get the idea. What in the void are you doing? Oh, my. He was cut off from its sentence by the sight of the gaping wound now suddenly closing. The flesh that had parted now magically somehow sewing itself together, blood disappearing, and the cut vanishing across a few seconds. Within less than 30 seconds, his wound was gone. The ambassador, worse for wear from the shock, but fine. I grabbed his arm and looked closely at it, marveling at the miracle I was witnessing. I looked at him. How? He sat back down and took a drink of water. Crazy human! To put it bluntly, my biologists and scientists somehow came up with a sort of miracle heating agent distilled from your species' venom. With a combination of various ingredients, including plant materials, a certain type of hemp plant, and of course, science. We made a few samples. He sat down, caught his breath, and handed me a small reinforced case full of vials with a blue liquid in them. Crazy human, I said aloud. I mean, uh, how does it work? He ignored my comment. Apparently, when your venom is combined with a certain kind of chemical substance, it gains some staggeringly potent regenerative properties. Two types of protein and one type of anesthetic protein. Probably distilled and mixed, administered with care, we effectively have the single greatest medical achievement in our history. One we've been looking for for centuries. I calculated, thought, considered we had never considered our venom to be much use these days, not even in combat. Can it be mass-produced? The base ingredients, yes. Your venom, no. We have tried repeatedly to try synthetically reproduce the prion-based protein that your venom produces to no avail. It's simply too, uh, unique. That brings us to our state of affairs, he said, sitting up straight, getting serious. Indeed, I said firm, thorax down in concentration. We would like to form a trade agreement for the mass production of the regenerative formula. Would save countless lives and would make us both staggeringly rich. Your people provide the venom, we provide the other ingredients. There is one more detail, though. 
He pushed his intercom button. Send in Mr. Hakim, please. The Torian ambassador, Hakim al Hoof walked in on his hooves, clanking on the ground. Yes, he said, ignoring the smell of blood and the spiders. I looked up at the towering man. Did he cut his arm open for you too? Please don't remind me. I can still smell it, he said simply. Crazy human. One of the ingredients in this medical formula is the Torian's alvarius plant. We have a human equivalent, aloe vera, but it is nowhere near as potent. See where I'm going with this, he said, and let us think on it. We looked at each other. I spoke first. A species once thought to be toxic and venomous even to look at, turning out to be the primary benefactors of the greatest medical achievement in the galactic history. Thought to be naught but mindless beasts that only know how to dig dirt and farm vegetables. Now, farming to contribute to one of the most life-saving plants in history, the Torian ambassador said in turn. Humans being humans, only with more helping than usual, Carson said in his turn. We all paused and thought, Back here, I'm in, we all said in unison and began signing contracts and agreements. End of story. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Lord Azrakal, Dragzoon WRE, Holly's sister, Ambrose Cattell, and Quantum Wednesday. Thank you very much.